Hey, good afternoon to you. Mark Sabbath Hurricane Track here, Wednesday now, the 3rd of September 2025. Boy, do we have a lot to talk about today. We have Kiko and Lorena out in the Eastern Pacific. Those I'm going to address first, mainly Lorena for obvious reasons. I'll show you. And then, yes, we're going to get to this new system, fairly new anyway, that's developing in the tropical Atlantic, almost a shoe-in to become our next name storm. And of course, the name will be Gabrielle. And yes, I do think it's going to be a concern for land, starting with the islands, the islands of the Caribbean, the Northeast Caribbean to be specific. We will cover all of this in as much detail as you can stand over the next several minutes. So let's get started, shall we? Good to have you along with me this afternoon. We will begin with the interactive tracking map off the Hurricane Track Insider site. Here is Lorena out here just south and west of the Baja. As we zoom the map out just a hair, there is Kiko headed in the general direction of Hawaii. But again, if you're headed to Hawaii anytime soon, don't even look at it. Don't worry about it. This will die away. Cooler water, less favorable thermodynamic profile out there. It's not even a concern. I just wanted to show you because it is there, so we should talk about it. But the bigger concern, for obvious reasons, is Lorena here. Now a Category 1 forecast to become a 2. And it, as well, will reach a less thermodynamic favorable profile, meaning cooler waters, you know, drier, more stable air. The Gulf of California is warm, but it's pretty narrow, so it doesn't have a big opportunity to re-strengthen. Sometimes when these systems move up through the Gulf of California, they do hold on a little longer, but this won't be the case for Lorena. That being said, it will bring copious amounts of moisture to northwest Mexico, and the southwest United States. So our friends here in Tucson, down to Sierra Vista, Tombstone, Benson area, all along the I-10 corridor and points south, you're going to want to be paying attention to this, as well as folks over in New Mexico, especially the Ruidoso area, for obvious reasons. All the flooding you've had, you just don't want to be caught unaware. And look, we are coming up on the weekend. People might be wanting to travel out there. It's nice. It's a beautiful time of year. Just be on top of this. Don't be stuck out there and be like, oh, I had no idea this was coming. Yes, tropical cyclones, hurricanes from the eastern Pacific affect, with an A, the southwest United States. It is a thing, believe me. So stay on top of it, all right? Showing you a few other little pieces of info on this. Here's the satellite view. Now, the, the good thing is it's a small hurricane. So the aerial coverage of it, not too big. So there won't be a huge envelope of moisture to work with. Nevertheless, a pretty vigorous central dense overcast. Same thing with Kiko out here. Pretty intense little hurricane there. Neither of them, though, very large in their size for what it's worth. Zooming in on specific info, there it is. This is the CDO, or again, that central dense overcast, the core area, which is actually in here of Lorena. Some pretty good convection in the Gulf of California itself. And again, all of that will be moving its way into the southwest U.S. eventually as the system sort of falls apart and the moisture gets separated and the whole thing just starts to fizzle away. Looking at the model guidance, clearly, at least pretty clearly, the U.K. Met wants to go this way, but whatever. Most of the guidance here, the consensus is that this will move its way across the Baja, crossing the Gulf of California, Sonora, Mexico, and then whatever is left over, if anything, of any low-level circulation, that would make its way into Arizona, possibly, maybe New Mexico. But the big thing here, not wind, nope, it is the rainfall. So keep that in mind. You can see that very clearly here. I'll point it out for you using this red color. Watch about right here. This is the uh, Big Sur area of the Baja, and our hurricane makes its way up. There it is, somewhere in there. Where'd you go? There it is. I had it too far out. My fault. So it comes up, makes landfall, crosses over, and what we're seeing here is your rainfall rate, your precipitation rate in millimeters per hour. But what I want you to draw your attention to is the gradient here in uh, the colors, right? The darker greens and then eventually the yellows and oranges. That tells me pretty heavy rainfall, and it's depicted in southeast Arizona, southwest New Mexico, and that eventually moves its way across New Mexico, so yeah, our friends near Albuquerque and then over towards the Ruidoso area, pay attention, all right? Check out weather.gov, weather.gov, stay on top of it. 
you're going hiking in this region over the weekend, be careful. This is Saturday afternoon. So just seriously, we, we need you alive, right? And if you're not aware, boy, the weather can sneak up on you. Now, here we go with our system out in the Atlantic. Not quite yet an invest area. And when it does become designated as an invest, it'll be 91, 91L for Atlantic. Notice that the area of formation chance, let's use yellow here, has now encroached upon the islands. And that is important because the guidance is starting to suggest that this is more south and west with each run. It's taking longer to get its act together, so it's gaining more longitude than latitude right now. And that means that once it does get going, and it does look like it eventually will, it's taking its time wrapping up out there, uh, this could be a problem for our friends in the Lesser Antilles. And then beyond that, you know the drill. Anything beyond about five to seven days, there's so much randomness and chaos and all kinds of different things that can happen that it is not even worth speculating. So we'll focus on the next five to seven days, and we'll see where things go from there. But for the time being, 40% chance of development over the next two days, 80%. Boy, I wish I had an 80% chance of winning the Powerball, right? What is it, over $1.4 billion or something? Anyhow, 80% is pretty high. And uh, this does look like it'll be our next name, Storm. And that name, of course, will be Gabrielle. This is what it looks like on satellite this fine afternoon. Not a lot out there. It's gradually getting better organized, a lot of energy available. Uh, and it's just going to take some time, but once it does, and because it is at such a fairly low latitude, remember, Aaron got started over here with an envelope of energy, and then it kind of got pivoted this way, and then started off at a fairly high latitude as it moved its way across, eventually turning, you know, something like that. Pretty good uh, rendition of what happened with Aaron. This system is starting at a much lower latitude and will stay at a fairly low latitude for the next several days. So, our friends over here in the Northeast Caribbean, you do need to be paying very close attention to this, as you should, because it's September 3rd today. It is hurricane season. You don't need me to tell you that. But we do have a, a suspect area. We need to watch it, and it could become something. So we'll certainly stay on top of it. From the vorticity perspective, and you know how much I like this product, Pretty easy to see where the strongest vorticity is right down here. Again, fairly low latitude. It's not up here 17, 18 north. It's straddling between 10 and 11, something like that. So yeah, fairly low latitude overall. Now, the all-important global models. Everybody likes to share and talk about the models. I totally get it. This is what it looks like out at 168 hours. I jumped ahead sort of saving some time here, if you will. Fairly well-developed hurricane in the GFS is the GFS run from today at 168 hours out. Now, I wanted to show you this because this is the 12Z run. Let's go back and let me show you what the 0Z run showed from last night. Pretty big difference there. Much weaker last night, much stronger, and much farther to the south and somewhat more west on today's 12Z run. One of the reasons I want to show you this is because we're not quite in a consistent run after run, like depiction and like full on developed system, whatever. We don't have that consistency. It's not quite there. So there's really not a lot to be worried about just yet. I say worried. I don't like that word. Worried implies that we don't really have a lot of information and, you know, there's, there's fear involved. The concern level of getting ready and all that. Not very high yet, because that consistency in the models from run to run is just not quite there. So now that we're looking at the 12Z here, let's back it up a little bit and see how we got to where we are a week out. This is valid September the 10th. So let's back it up and see where our beginnings come from. Now, this is important. You can see, if I can get this to do right for me, uh, we got the monsoon trough in a tropical convergent zone sitting out here. A lot of energy, a lot of vorticity and available energy to bundle up, and that is the key. When, time-wise, when and where on the map does that happen? GFS suggests that maybe we start to see this consolidate even at 24 hours tomorrow, a little bit more 
reflection down there. Let me just highlight what I'm talking about right there. By 48 hours, it's even more so. And remember, one of the things that I really like about looking at the 5,000 foot level, the 850 millibar part of, uh, of any model, especially the more reliable globals, it really does show me the framework, the skeleton of our system. If it doesn't look solid here, it sure as heck isn't going to look solid at 500 millibars, at 200 millibars, and so forth. So if it looks good, healthy-wise, meteorologically speaking, at the surface, then we have something, and you know, 5,000 feet is close enough to the surface, right? Um, if it looks decent here, then it has something to build upon, and sure enough, that's what happens over time. It does start to gain a little bit of latitude as it wraps up there, and then it's off to the races, and by 168 hours, it is approaching the islands here, all right? And you have a pretty strong high pressure area to the north and all the usual players that we have to watch for. Will there be a weakness over here? You know, we've done this a million times over the years and it's just impossible to know what's going to happen at all after seven days. And even that is a stretch. Come on. Sometimes 48 hours is a stretch, especially going back to this. That's what it looked like from the zero Z run. So we got to get some consistency in the models. Now, just to show you, last night's, uh, or I'm sorry, this morning, that's still last night, initialized at 6Z, getting our times right there, 06Z from the Euro, ECMWF, same part of the atmosphere, 850 millibars, run this out to six days. It's also taking off and uh, getting its act together, and it moves pretty much due west, south of this very stout subtropical ridge sitting up here and a very well-developed tropical cyclone at a fairly low latitude, all things considered. In fact, again, the magic of Dr. Cowan's site, we'll call it 14 degrees north. We'll just round it up there, 13.99. That's not 18 or 19 like Aaron was. It rode at a pretty high latitude relative to where this could be six days out. This only goes out to six days on our particular run here off of the Tidbit site. So, I think it is safe to say we definitely need to watch this next system, presumably going to be Gabrielle, quite closely. Again, our friends in the islands will be the first impacted, but that is more than a week away. It's going to be a fairly slow mover, and that will give us plenty of time to watch and react accordingly. And you know that there will be run after run, especially beyond that five-day, seven-day time frame, where all kinds of wild things will happen and, you know, there's a whole debate about it. I'm, I see it all the time on social media. This shouldn't be shared. Nobody should see this. I think the one good thing that at least people sharing this stuff, even without context, it gets people talking about it and more aware of the weather. I try to be positive about it. I know that some people look at it and they don't understand the context and they kind of might get upset about it or whatever. But, hey, at least it gets people thinking about the weather and with everything else going on in our lives let's take that at least as a win and then we can fine-tune things as they move along all right so that's what we know today and we'll see what we know more tomorrow right absolutely all right that's it from me for today enjoy the rest of your wednesday i'm mark Suttoth from all of us at hurricane track i'll talk to you again tomorrow